Hello there, folks. You may be aware of the existence of this person on the left of your screen called Esther Kraku. She is a regular on talk TV, but she seems to crop up absolutely bloody everywhere these days. She offers absolutely nothing in terms of rational debate or coherent train of thought. She's one of those types who chooses a new daft hill on which to die on an almost daily basis. She appeared on Alexis Conran's Channel 5 show to discuss the COVID inquiry and whether it is right for Baroness Hallett to demand access to all of a person's WhatsApp messages. Esther is going to come out with a whole load of guff here, mainly because her sole intention is to go on TV and shovel muck for the right wing. Let's have a look. Esther, what do you think? If, if you're a minister, right, and you're in government and something happens like a pandemic, there is an inquiry. Your messages are important to that inquiry. That inquiry should have access to all of them, right? Yes, the messages related to that particular crisis. OK, but who gets to, re to decide what's relatable and what isn't? Well, obviously, the, the um, you know, committee in charge of, of conducting the inquiry. But I do think we have to look at the wider context, right? There is something very anti-democratic about this. So in the case of Boris, for instance, they're asking for unredacted messages sent and received by Boris between 1st of January 2020 and 24th of February 2022. So mm -hmm. all of his messages on WhatsApp in a two-year period they want access to, they don't need access to all of that. They just need access to the group chats where they were discussing COVID policy and anything related to that. You don't get to decide that for some reason you get access to all of someone's, um, you know, messages being sent, they still have the right to privacy. Everyone still has a right to privacy. I think there's something very anti-democratic about saying that just because you held a position in public office, now all of your messages are, are you know, are, can be exposed and we can read them. Look at what happened to uh, Matt Hancock. I don't feel sorry for him. OK. But, you know, I don't think that's right. But, but he I can only really compare Esther to a toddler who has learned a new naughty word. It's almost like she's discovered this expression anti-democratic without having any idea what it means. There is nothing anti-democratic here at all. Government ministers are given iPhones to aid them in carrying out their responsibilities. There should be nothing personal contained within any messages on those work-issued phones. And if there is, well, that's just tough shit. That is the fault of their own stupid incompetence. Professional and personal are two separate things. As sloppy Suella found out when sending government documents using her personal phone on six occasions. So no, Esther, there is nothing remotely anti-democratic about any of this. If they have breached their own privacy by sending personal messages on their work phones, that's just too bad. And I'm sure Baroness Hallett couldn't care less about it anyway. Here's the thing that I think is confusing a lot of people, and I have to say, including me. Um, you've decided to set up an inquiry yep. to find out what went on. Yeah, of course. That inquiry says, right, we need all the material. Mm -hmm. um, Related uh, to the inquiry. No, they, they say we need all the material. And now the people who are being investigated are going to choose which material is related to the inquiry. That seems a little bit odd. It's as if I'm being investigated for some crime I've committed and, and the evidence that I'm asked to give, and I said, well, hang on a minute, I'm going to decide which evidence I'm going to give you for your inquiry. That feels a bit off. Well, there's obviously a back and forth. You obviously have lawyers discussing, you know, to what extent do they need access to something? What is the legality of it? I get that. Okay. But in the case of Boris, because he's, he's the one that sparked this debate, they want all of his messages for two years. It's Between not just 20... Boris, it, it's, it's well, everybody yeah, else. Well, yes. It's, uh, it's uh, Rishi Sunak yeah. as, as well as Liz Truss. Jonathan, uh, what do you feel about this? I think that if you are going to have an inquiry, I completely agree with the head of the inquiry, Baroness Hallett, when she says that it's her job to decide what's relevant to her inquiry, not the job of the Cabinet Office or any individual minister to decide mm -hmm. what should be redacted. Because what goes to the inquiry is not going to be released wholesale to the public. Well, we don't know that. That's no, what happened with Matt no, Hancock. No, no, but that, that was a leak to the Telegraph. Well. This is not the same thing. This is... You know, it's hard to work out sometimes whether this stuff is intentional or just plain stupid. There is no doubt these right-wing commentators dedicate an awful lot of time to attempting to discredit 
absolutely anybody investigating conservative governments. But to suggest Baroness Hallett would behave in any way similar to the selfish, penny-pinching gobshite that is Isabel Oakeshott is honestly one of the most doltish ideas I have heard all year. And I watch a lot of talk TV and GB news. That moron Hancock willingly handed over his messages to perhaps the least trustworthy person in journalism. And that is apparently, according to Esther here, to be equated with Baroness Hallett gathering evidence for a public inquiry. Ah, oh, deary me. This is a formal public inquiry that's going to decide what is in the public interest. And we, whenever we have um, sort of release of documents from the government uh, or whoever, there are always bits that are redacted because the public doesn't need to know the individual details and obviously some messages which are purely personal or irrelevant. You know, anyone in the inquiry is going to be able to judge that. They're not out to, to get anyone. I'm sorry, this is politics. Anyone. Everyone is always out to no, get No, come on, like... But it's, it's true. That, that, is, that is... It would be extremely naive for us to say that, oh, because they're acting in the public's interest, there will be no, you okay. know... Uh, but it might be embarrassing, motives. but, but there, something's going to be embarrassing. Sure, the thing. but if they're related to something yeah, that actually happened, politics, we should we have a There's always an ulterior motive. I don't necessarily, I don't, you know, <laughs> Matt Hancock is not my, my, my sweetheart or someone I, I have a dear love for. But, you know, there is always a risk of having personal stuff being leaked, and that's what it shows. I think if you have messages, for instance, being leaked a year before an election, right, the risk that that could significantly affect public opinion actually is really high. That is, that is, that is. Where on earth is she going with this now? So we shouldn't hold public inquiries into government conduct on the small chance something could be leaked which could sway public opinion further against the Tories. Is that what she's saying? The desperation is written all over her face. She's been sent out there to discredit absolutely everything related to the inquiry and she doesn't care how foolish she looks as she is attempting to do so. That is a concern, uh, but we know uh, from everything that's been written that any messages, uh, again, the potential embarrassing subjects of COVID-19 contracts on, for example, decisions of own contracts or care homes, they will be scrutinised but not be made public until 2025. So that's way after the election. So there's no danger of any of this embarrassing ministers who are standing for re-election, for example. But, but again, I come back to... A lot of people are wondering, hang on a minute, we want to find out what went on during the pandemic and the decision making, because we might face another one. Hope not, but we may do. What lessons can we learn? Are we really saying that a pandemic which cost hundreds of thousands of lives, the inquiry should be hampered because we don't want to embarrass some ministers? No, Is that I'm, really I'm not saying that saying? at all. I'm saying that the information that should be, you know, that these the people investigating the, the this, this issue should have access to should only be related mm -hmm. to COVID. To ask someone for all of their messages over two years, I mean, can, put yourself in that situation. If I asked you for every single message you've received on WhatsApp and you've sent on WhatsApp in the last two years, do you think that would have anything to do if I was investigating you for something you had done during COVID? Well, actually... She doesn't seem to be aware of the two separate phones. She doesn't seem to be aware that the government work phone is for work purposes only and there should be nothing inappropriate or personal sent on there. She's equating this to us handing over our personal devices, which is just so stupid. Actually, when you have... When you have but is that police, fair? When you have police investigations... Um, you submit yeah. all of your... That's uh, when you have police investigations or lawsuits, you know, obviously with the, the Vardy, mm. uh, sort of Wagatha Christie trial, you know, the whole point was, you know, the, it was, the whole phone was meant to be given and then obviously it was dropped to the bottom of the sea. Um, but, but this isn't a but criminal the, case. No, no, but that, but that wasn't a criminal case either, actually. Um, so the, the, point, <laughs> the, point, the point was that, you know, you, you, the other side gets to see your messages and they'll decide what's relevant. And actually, so it's a kind of a basic principle, actually. So I kind of agree that... You have the, the the chair of the inquiry has the right to see all the messages. And the really important point here is that you need to have public confidence in this inquiry because the public, I don't think at the moment, has confidence in all the decisions that were taken. And of course, Jonathan Liss is absolutely correct there. This is a basic principle of any inquiry. But for somebody like Esther, 
a Tory apologist, she will never accept it. And she will continue to cast shade over anything that may portray the Tories in a bad light in the run-up to the next general election. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Um, I'm currently out of the country in Cyprus for a few weeks. Trying my best to keep up to date with everything happening over there. But um, it's difficult when the sun's out and all I want to do is go scuba diving and whatnot. But anyway, I'll be back soon. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.